Debo Samuel was a decent receiver. He's, he's a good receiver. Nothing about what he did just at the receiver position made him a $100 million wide receiver. Now, adding him as a running back, adding him as a jet sweep wide receiver, adding him as a running back screen wide receiver. The problem is, he don't want to be that $100 million player because he just wants to play wide receiver. When you were doing that, that's when people started to notice you. That's when the whole world took notice of number 19 for the 49ers. I'm glad the Lions are being talked about. They shook up the draft. They did. They really pulled the rug out, maybe from Green Bay. Jameson Williams almost didn't happen. That is because apparently the Lions offered 32 and 66 for Debo Samuel. And then essentially you would have had to pay Debo five years, 110 million. So would you rather have Debo Samuel, five years, 110 million, or would you rather have Jamison Williams and Josh Pascal uh, on your team? Not both necessarily rookie Pascal, deals? because they'd be picking at 34. Ah, yeah, right? Oh, good yeah. for you. Yeah. Good there for you. you. Go. So they got yes. a higher pick. There you go. Good for you. Well, well, yeah, here, here, go here, first. Go my, first, go my first. take on it is Debo Samuels is not worth $100 million. Mm. He is not that kind of receiver. He's a good receiver. Mm. I'm a fan of his. But for this franchise, a Debo Samuels type receiver at that cost, absolutely not. For two reasons. One, you still don't have a quarterback. Mm -hmm. Why are you paying the receiver that kind of money? You're not sure what you're doing with your quarterback. Number two, which is really 1A, is there's too many good wide receivers coming out of college every year. That is a high-profile position. That is a position where you look at what's been coming out in the draft in the last two or three years. You can Once you get your quarterback set, you can get a top-notch receiver coming into the league sometime soon or a number two from someplace else to come in and be very productive. Uh, I echo my dad's sentiments. I'll add a little something to that. Debo Samuel was a decent receiver. He's, he's a good receiver. He's a good receiver. I haven't seen anything out of just the receiver position that he was great at, great at last year. Like Dad said, nothing about what he did just at the receiver position made him a hundred million dollar wide receiver. Now, when you want to add in what Mike Shan, I mean what Kyle Shanahan was able to do in terms of adding him as a running back, adding him as a jet sweep wide receiver, adding him as a running back screen wide receiver, adding all the nuances and the tangibles that they did in the second half of the season when they really started to have success, and then in the playoffs where they really started cooking with grease, he is a hundred million dollar player the problem is he don't want to be that hundred million dollar player because he just wants to play wide receiver he didn't like how they used him and i understand that because it's taking years off his life he got but, cream but debo samuel like when you were doing that that's when people tried to start to notice you that's when the whole world took notice of number 19 for the 49ers you don't want to be that that's fine you ain't getting my hundred million dollar debo samuel without that extra stuff it's not a hundred million dollar player that's the whole point right there bray because so, i mean that's to answer like, your question uh i'm fine right. with james Woods. look D debo i saw Sam him at the end of the year debo uh -huh. he was a beaten man and coming off the it, field and understandably yeah, Baz, he took that's why he doesn't want to do that and earlier yeah. every year it that's, that's why he doesn't way. want to be that guy yeah. he's right. no heinz ward <laughs> yeah. so he but plays like at, at the same time if you're telling me that Debo Samuel doesn't want to be Debo Samuel. He just wants to be the wide receiver. He doesn't want to be that slash I think guy. It's half. Yeah, I mean, I'm not paying him a hundred million for that. I, yeah. I consider it if he embraced his role and just to use a Maz reference. But I mean, he, he, that's I'm, like Adam West not wanting to be known for Batman. <laughs> exactly. He, Debo Samuel has not known that he can control the game outside the numbers strictly when his routes getting in and out of breaks, creating separation and taking over a game just as a wide outside wide receiver. He hasn't shown that he can do that for that price. That's real. I mean, at the end of the day, everybody thinks it's easy to play wide receiver in the league now. That's why so many of them coming out. Like Debo Samuel was a pretty good wide receiver. He, he he had his coming out party last week. Guess who? Against the Detroit Lions. So we watched him closely last year. But he's not a $100 million player. I take that back. He's not a $100 million wide receiver. Right. He's a $100 million player. Are you guys surprised, uh, Stan, I'll come to you with this. Um, are you guys surprised, are you surprised, Stan, at how the wide receiver position is viewed now? I believe if you average the top 15 players at each position. Wide receiver salaries are now second only to quarterbacks. So the general managers in the NFL are putting a heavy emphasis on that position. Are you surprised how far it's come? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. And the reason why I say that is when I looked at the, the top five or six wide receivers drafted, uh, the, the four or five that went in the first round and the few that went in the second round, 
in the first round, you had one wide receiver over the height of six feet and over 200 pounds, and that's a kid from USC. Drake London. You know, being 6'5". All the other guys, and I reminded my, my last child, Bailey Edwards, the same size. These guys are about between 5'11 and 6'1", between 175 pounds and 190 pounds. It's about getting in and out of your cuts, you know, being able to decelerate and and – being acrobatic enough to catch the difficult pass. And all these guys can do that. So the wide receiver position is really becoming the cornerback of the offense. Mm -hmm. The best athlete on the field now is starting to be the wide receiver because they can do a number of things when you got guys that – so Keenan Allen is a great example for me. He lacks one thing. Speed. Mm -hmm. And that's to open up the, 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 and, and take it off the top. $20 million player. But would be, would the be other things that he can do, he can, he can do it as almost any. He can be ad lib. He can stand there and shake, do all that, and stay on schedule mm -hmm. and still be where he's supposed to be for and a quarterback. Arguably runs the best routes yes, in the NFL. Yes, yeah, uh, a lot of those Alabama guys run great routes, too. That's what I like about James Fast Williams. Hell, you look yeah. at uh, Julio Jones and then uh, Calvin, Calvin Ridley. Amari yeah. um, Cooper. Amari Cooper. Cooper. They all run Another. great routes. I will say this, too. You mentioned uh, college wide receivers. College wide receivers, too, might be one of the most skilled position coming out of college right now. So you see what the Tennessee Titans did with A.J. Brown. They're like, why pay this guy uh, $25 million a year right. when well, we can get a, a shiny new piece Absolutely. in the draft? Absolutely. And that's why I think that we did get Jameson Williams, mm -hmm. that we didn't need Debo Samuels, because there's going to be some young wide receivers that's coming up that we can get that's going to be almost as productive, but a heck of a lot less to pay. I want to mention this, Stan, and I, and I mentioned this to the boys before, and I, I'm hesitant about taking a guy that has an injury. And I know Braylon's already schooled me on the ACL. It's not like it used to be. It's like Tommy right. John surgery uh, for a pitcher now. It's like nothing. But look at the Saints at 11. Yeah. They could have had Jamison Williams. Yeah, they could have. They took Chris Olave. Right. And the reason they took it, you hear, you hear Mel Kuyper, you hear, uh, you hear uh, Todd McShay. Who the hell is Mel Kuyper? Todd, Todd, Todd. You hear because they didn't want to chance the injury because Jamison grades higher than all the receivers when right. it came down to it if he was healthy. So what's your take on that? I, when I graded um, James Williams as a live line, I had A++ slash incomplete. We are assuming because medical technology has all these other players coming back in, in a short amount of time that the same thing is going to happen to him. We don't know. And I'm like you. I, I don't know that I would not have, if I'm, if I'm the New Orleans Saints, I don't know that I wouldn't make the same move because I'm like, hey, before he got hurt, he was something special. He was the next Justin Jefferson and, and Jamar Chase. But he is injured, and so we have to take that in strong consideration. Oh, yeah, I'm glad uh, Brad Holmes did what he did. I'm glad the Lions are being talked about. They shook up the draft. They did. They really pulled the rug out, maybe from Green Bay, because maybe the Packers. Seven-win football team. <laughs> maybe the Packers yeah. were looking to maybe move up and get that kid. Right. And you, keep, you play a keep away. They did deal with Minnesota, yep. which shocks me. A, a team in your own division. In the old days, that would never happen. You no, don't make deals. No. Now they're making them like 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 you're doing laundry. Yeah, yeah. They have a new they have a new uh, front office over there in Minnesota, and Braylon is familiar with some of those guys over there. It'll be interesting to see that. When I found out where they got the from, I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> are they okay with that? Yeah. Is that not gonna come back to haunt them? But time will tell. So all the uh, geniuses uh, that are, that do the commenting on the uh, that are just. Killing Twitter, us, YouTube, killing yeah. us on the the, the Adam gang, uh, yeah, the Adam the Adam Adam's gang. gang, Adam Baydoon's gang, killing us for wanting the quarterback. Yeah, um, they want a quarterback next year. Okay, in the same sentence, they uh, you know guys like Adam, they'll say, well, they expect the Lions to win six to nine games next year. Or, so uh, <laughs> yeah, so therefore the good quarterbacks are going to be gone. They're going to be gone anyway. So but, I, is I, I want your take on that, Stan. And is there a number? that you think Dan Campbell has to win. Look, if Dan Campbell wins four games next year, I think he's out, to be honest with you. No. I think if Dan Campbell wins, goes 4-13 and 13 next year and you can go get your quarterback at that point, I think he's gone. Do you think there's it's, a number of wins next year well, that he has to win? I, I think there is, but let me come back to the, yeah. the, the other point first. Because, and I heard all this talk prior to the draft, there, this is not a quarterback draft. So, you know, Pickett and, 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 and Lee Willis, Willis, all those guys, yeah. they're not, they're not um, uh, franchise quarterbacks. How many years have we seen this is a great quarterback draft and one or two of them really pan out? Yeah. 
So you just don't know. Because they're better quarterbacks next year, all of them may flame out and not be good. you got to take the best quarterback available. Sometime in the draft, if you don't have a top 10 quarterback as your starter, Dan Campbell. I think he will probably win four games. I do. Uh, if he wins just four or less, does he keep his job? I think he's a unique personality. His team was exciting to watch, mm. not just as a Lions fan. People talked about that around the country. Yeah. So I think that's enough for him to go to see year number three. I, I believe they can and will t- w- win if healthy. If healthy. If healthy, Braylon. I think they can win 10 games next year. I mean, it's a possibility. Anything's a possibility. Shoot, uh, for the most part. So I, I get that. You have a puncher's chance always. Uh, I don't think they will. I don't think they're ready to win 10 games. You saw that last year. You'll see a little bit of that this year. I think eight is more realistic. But with that being said, just talking about it yesterday, we talked about it yesterday, we'll talk about it again. You said, is there a number of games? That that answer is zero. Mm. Zero is the only amount of games he can win because there's technically no wins that he'll get fired. Outside of that, they're building too much. You watch what they did last year. You see the excitement. Like Dad said, they were a fun team to watch. Whether they were winning or losing, you see them get their first win. You see the excitement. You see the cohesiveness of the front office and the coach at the same time. Sheila Hamm, you see the draft this year, the draft last year. You got hard knocks uh, coming up this year. Then you have the draft in 2024. Be kind of hard to fire guy after you had him on hard knocks. So I think they're moving in the right direction. If he goes 0 and 17, they will fire him. Outside of that, Dan Campbell will be your coach moving into 2023. Can't wait till Malik Willis leads the Tennessee Titans to a freaking Super Bowl. Me too. I love Kenny Pickett too. I can't wait. Malik will be Dan Campbell.